get ready to spice things up in the bedroom. No, no, not like that. We're talking about ideas and tips, nine of them in fact, to help you take your bedrooms to the next level. Let's get started. To kick things off, we're looking at saving space in small bedrooms, and there's no better object to turn to than bunk beds. Now of course, you can simply use these to stack two beds on top of each other, but there's more. One thing you'll notice is that if you hover over a bunk bed with two beds in it, then you'll only get a color customization option. But if you hover over a bunk bed, with just a top bunk installed, then you'll be able to choose where the ladder goes on the bed and we do love the added customization. Another thing that's handy to know is that it's not just beds that can go under bunk beds. Desks, small dresses and even one to two seat lounges are all great options and you can save a few tiles worth of space by placing them under a bunk bed. It's perfect for small rooms or even for if you just like your rooms to feel a little bit more compact. While we're on the topic of compact beds, it's also worth throwing in that if you have the tiny living stuff pack, then Murphy beds can be handy in saving a bit of space too. Next up is considering custom bed heads for your bed. Some of the beds, yeah, they do the job, but by using various wall hangings as a bed head, you can really make beds look like someone put together and important, much like yourself, sleeps in them. For this, the wall decorations within decorative objects is a great place to start. The another red herring and the corrugated glass tapestry objects from the Eco Lifestyle Expansion Pack are great options, but really it's just about experimenting. There are some really impactful plant inspired wall hangings too that can work. Remember to use the BB.move objects on cheat to merge the objects together and of course depending on what you use as a bed head, make sure that you play test it to make sure that your sims can still sleep in the bed. It's worth noting that it doesn't have to specifically be a bed head either. You could have a grand feature window behind your bed or a captivating art piece that hangs above it. I just find that adding a little something to or behind a bed can really help make it pop. Also, if it's a big room, then something at the end of the bed, like an ottoman, can be an easy way to make the room feel a little more luxurious. The third idea is to add in a bay window seat. Now this can be a little tricky, but a relatively easy way to do this is to literally place a bay window, such as the bay beautiful designs window or the basic bay window, and then to place a lounge that fits this shape inside using the move objects cheat. My favorite seat to put in is the basic bay window seat from the cats and dogs expansion pack. But know that there are similarly shaped seats from seasons and from my first pet stuff. Now let's be honest, it works, but it's not perfect. Another option is to try and make one from scratch. For this, make a nook in the wall and place lots of windows on it before placing the seat inside. Moving on, and we're taking a deep dive into wardrobes, in some cases literally. Gone are the days where you plonk a dresser in the corner of a room. Actually, that's a lie. They do have their place, but there are so many other options you're likely not considering, such as walk-in wardrobes. There's a few ways that you can go about making a walk-in wardrobe. One is placing your bed around the middle of your room and then placing a wall behind it. The passageway between the two walls behind the bed can then be turned into a wardrobe area. I will flag that if you have the Dream Home Decorator game pack, then this works perfectly for this kind of space. Another option is to section off an area of the room with a wall that goes part of the way and build a wardrobe in that area. And let's not forget the luxury that is having an adjoining room that's completely dedicated to being your wardrobe. Another major consideration should be built-in wardrobes that come with the Get Together expansion pack. Hiding these by placing them in an indent in a room so that they sit flush with a wall can look great. But the true value of these comes in the gameplay they bring. Child sims can play in them, and if your sims are super sad, then they're also a great place to cry. They're also a, well, rather uncomfortable looking woohoo spot. Don't ask me why you'd have woohoo amongst a heap of shoes and coat hangers when a comfortable bed is in the same room. But hey, maybe it's about variety. The fifth idea is to add in a feature wall, which can just act as a captivating point of interest in your room. This can be a unique wallpaper, or maybe you've put some stone on one wall of a bedroom, but much like the whole bedhead situation, the wall feature could be a unique piece of art, a hanging of some sort, or even a very grand window. Next up is another quick one, being to think about lighting. 
You can change the colour and intensity of every single light, and this can very quickly and easily provide different looks and feels to rooms. For example, maybe a teenager has some coloured lights near their computer. Or maybe if you're going for a more cosy feel, you could dim the lights in the bedroom and potentially even give them more of an orange colour. We're moving on now, and for number 7, we're talking about adding gameplay to your bedrooms. While yes, there's a lot to be done in the bed itself, or wardrobes as we've learnt, there's also a lot of ways to simply make your bedroom a more useful and engaging area. Desk areas with computers or simple study spaces, reading nooks with or without a fireplace, toys and games for kids, a space for your pets to snuggle up and keep you company, mirrors to help you freshen up, get flirty and start blowing kisses to yourself in. Maybe there's an instrument sitting in your room for you to practice on or a TV to watch. And if you have the city living expansion pack, then you could even hook this up to a console. The long story short is that while a bedroom should definitely be about sleeping, it doesn't have to only be about sleeping. Next up, we're looking at adding personality to a room, and this is mainly done through clutter. Now, clutter doesn't necessarily have to make your room feel cluttered, but a few bits and pieces here and there can really bring a room to life. When it comes to choosing what kind of clutter to use, I like to consider the sim who the bedroom belongs to, think about their personality and what they're into. Maybe they love sport, and so a few sporting posters or pieces of art are on the wall. Maybe they're a slob, so you have dirty clothes on the floor. Or if you had an archaeologist sim, then their room could be filled with the treasures that they found. If your sim loves travel, then you could also place framed pictures from their trips away all over the wall. Or it could be as simple as a cute single couple or family photo on the bedside table. I find making your bedroom somewhat reflect the sim who sleeps there a great way to make it feel more real and also an awesome way to build on your sim's personality. Finally, the ninth idea is just to consider giving your bedroom an ensuite. An attached bathroom can just add a bit of convenience to your bedroom. Like when we wake up in the middle of the night and need to pee, and we don't have time to be walking down hallways. No, we do not, especially in winter. The answer is no. An attached ensuite can add a sense of luxury too, and you could consider locking the door so that only the sim whose bedroom is attached is able to use it. And with that, we've reached the end. That's nine ideas to help you improve your bedrooms. If you enjoyed or found this helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like, I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any cool bedroom ideas of your own, then please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your awesome ideas. Anyway, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you later.